Welcome everybody to my office again. Um, I'm Chris with HVAC ProBlog. Uh, today's topic is grow your business with maintenance contracts. So I have to say uh, this is a, a very important topic. I appreciate everybody joining on time. Um, I'm actually just going to move the video so you guys can see the screen, right? Uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, maintenance contracts in an HVAC business is uh, a, it's a complete business decision. It's, it's being proactive. It's really important. If you want to, uh, you want planned growth, you want to be able to hire the best technicians and not have tremendous peaks and valleys throughout the year, uh, particularly with income in your business. I think uh, maintenance contracts is the number one item in an HVAC uh, business that can really change this for you. So when I always get the question, when should I implement this? I got to tell you, if you don't have one, it should have been yesterday. All right. Implementation uh, can happen any time of the year, any day. Uh, it's all in how you plan on charging your customer. So some uh, maintenance contracts, depending on your business, may be monthly payments. I got to tell you, that's a little tough to track unless you have a service to do that for you. So if somebody misses a payment because their expiration date on their card uh, changed or they have an expired card or whatever it is, you got to have someone in your office or a service available to you to follow up on that payment, right? So that's a little tougher, but obviously a lot easier to sell because it's a lower monthly payment, right? So just like when you offer financing in the sales process, if I'm offering a really low monthly payment for, for maintenance, for the year, uh, you can see how it's easy to say yes. I personally stuck with annual payments. I did this for a few reasons. Uh, we used to send them out in January and um, I'll, I'll give you the, some templates and stuff after this. I'll show you where to get them. Um, we used to send them out in January. We'd give a month for the, everybody to renew. It really helped flatten our cash flow problem, uh, particularly during what used to be the worst months of the year. For us, that was January, February, and early March. Uh, we did a lot of gas heat. Obviously, if you're selling oil, uh, delivery for oil was hopefully up during that first quarter. Um, maybe not this past year, I imagine, but uh, for most years, you you're still have a steady stream of income in that side of the business during those months. I think a lot of mechanical contractors have a tough time if you're primarily, uh, your business is retrofit and service. Those are the toughest months here in New England for sure. So I stuck with annual payments to get that influx of cash flow. And the key here is, is we're going to account for that in a separate part of our business, right? So when we start doing that work come, let's say March, April, depending on when the snow's gone, uh, we're going to start billing against that account, right? Seems logical here, but if you've never implemented this, really important to track this for man hours and for uh, profit. We need to show that this is a profitable part of your business, okay? So um, not only did it even cash flow, it also for us evened workload, right? So if we can drive the workload in early April when I started going out and doing, uh, you know, preventive maintenance on commercial projects, commercial accounts uh, for rooftops, and then I started focusing on heat pumps um, early on and ACs once it got warm enough, right? I wasn't relying on the telephone to call. I was sending out reminder cards come uh, April 1st to tell my customers, hey, call me if you want to schedule. Otherwise, I'm going to be reaching out to you because I owe you this service, right? So having um, constant contact with your customer throughout the year, depending on their systems and when they're planned for maintenance is really important, right? So you are able to increase communication. Your customers start to expect that from you which obviously you can start including other items when you start uh, advertising to your customers, even when it's really about getting you out there for that maintenance they already paid for, okay? So um, proactive decision, really important. The first piece I wanna talk about is how to implement this on new installs. And if you made it right before class started, I actually, uh, I had mentioned, I kind of gave away my secret, I really just included the price of the first year of the maintenance right in the, in the proposal. So we included it with every new quote on every system we sold. Um, we took that amount and put it into a separate account and we pulled it out just like we would have for a labor warranty or an accessory or something else we sold on the job that didn't get put into the uh, new install service uh, billing department piece, right? So whatever account you want to call it. So that way it was accounted for and we build against that account when we went out there for maintenance, all right? 
really important you track it correctly. Obviously, if you're including maintenance on uh, new installations, it really pairs well with labor warranties. So if you have a one-year labor warranty, you would include a one-year maintenance, right? If you had a two-year labor warranty, it would be two years of maintenance. And that cost would be bundled to build the value. So imagine walking in and uh, offering, you know, five years labor, maintenance, parts, everything on all your installations. It, you either pay for it as a customer today and you have all that planned maintenance and you're locking in that labor rate that you, they normally, you, you guys normally have today instead of uh, dealing with price increases tomorrow, right? So that's the value and also the, the word of caution, I would tell you, right? You don't wanna go too far out with that maintenance in case you do have things that influence your business with costs, right? So we're gonna be very specific as to what's included and what's not included in those maintenance contracts when we write those up, all right? So really easy with new installations. So I always added that and it created a value when I proposed this to the customer. And if it really came down to price for the customer and they were a long time standing customer and I wanted to keep them or they really wanted to use me, well, guess what? That's one of those things that most other contractors were not including. So I would take that out and get uh, my price down, let's say a hundred bucks or $200 or whatever it is. Right. So I never reduce the price without removing something of value, right? You never just drop your price. That's like the cardinal sin. So, um, another note here is I really want to encourage you. If you do this on that first one, you send your best technician or your service manager. So that way they go through the entire system. And when you present this in your sales process, you talk about how your system's covered for everything for that first year of my labor warranty. So I'm gonna come out for maintenance while you're still under warranty in case I find anything. And if I find something, everything's covered, you don't have to pay, right? So it's really important and they see the value of that first one. They don't, you don't just don't want a tech walking in, you know, kicking the ductwork in the basement and saying how it's still here, right? You want them going through the coils, cleaning everything, um, writing down all the information, everything you would promise as if it was a 10 year old system, okay? And, and let's be honest, after a year, I hope it's not really dirty. It shouldn't take the tech the full amount of time it takes on a system that's been installed 10 years, but um, it doesn't mean they should fly through it, all right? They need to give it the same attention and the same level of detail and the same explanation to that customer as if it was a brand new uh, maintenance contract for, for an old piece of equipment. And the way to get this to work right, I think, and the way it worked well with the companies I've worked at or the company I, I, I owned at one time, um, is to implement a SPIF program, all right? Whether on uh, new installations, it's included and there's a small SPIF to the salesman. Um, when we get to service, a small SPIF to the, uh, the service technician that renews that contract um, or the work that's going in for the renewals. So I actually worked at a company when we implemented a maintenance contract program, we had zero on, on one day I was there. By the end of the year, we had 300 maintenance contracts. And I would say one of the biggest, best things that we did in our company was a, a SPIF program, including our service coordinator who was doing all the paperwork, right? That's one way to make sure it gets done. And it was paid out in, in a, a, like a 401k type of um, incentive payment. Uh, every six months, actually, we did it because of the way uh, our business rolls, right? So we do a lot of service in the spring and then we kick up again in the fall. So there was a huge influx of service contract money during those times. And then of course, renewals were annual, okay? All right, so installations, new installations are, are pretty simple, but you're, you have to present the value so that way it, it justifies the additional cost. I have to tell you, I was much better at selling a maintenance contract at service, all right? When I was out on service, there was, if somebody didn't have a maintenance contract, I'd feel defeated if I left without selling one. So, and there's a few different ways to do it. I'm actually reading a new book uh, by Russell Brunson. It's called Traffic Secrets. I actually brought it just in case, just came out. But in the book, and I wanna give him some credit here, it's not something that I, I came up with as far as the sales funnel. And this is, uh, he lays it out for, for website traffic, okay? But um, in the sales process or in service, if you're a service, uh, a service tech selling, um, you can break it down into three parts, right? There's the hook, you're casting the hook, you're, you're throwing that hook out, um, the story, and then of course your offer. And it, I, I used to make it sound something along the lines like this. Like I would go out on service because they had no AC um, and I would find very quickly, let's say a, a failed capacitor or a, a failed condenser fan motor. 
something very obvious. So I'd then, after I wrote down all my information, all my notes, anything that was obvious that needed to be fixed, I'd walk in and I'd talk to the homeowner and I would say, you know, Mrs. Jones, um, your, your condenser fan motor failed. Luckily we have one on the truck. All right. Um, yeah, I gotta tell you, we usually find these things starting to fail when we do maintenance on, on systems. I'm sorry, you don't have air conditioning. Um, I can get this fixed, but I think, you know, on a system that's five, 10, 15, however old it is, you really want to go through the entire unit and just not provide a bandaid to it. Right. So, you know, I gotta, I gotta say I've done this X amount of years and, um, just last week, we found one failing and since they were a maintenance customer, they didn't have to pay for diagnosis. And we actually give our maintenance customers X percent off, right? It's part of our program because we're flat rate. Um, if you guys aren't flat rate, that's another thing you may want to consider. Totally different class today than today, all right? Um, so I tell the story and, and be honest, somebody down the street or whoever, whatever a friend was, whoever it was, right? Um, and, you know, luckily we found it starting to fail. She made the choice of replacing it ahead of time. It was a lot less expensive and you don't have to pay for these diagnosis, diagnosis fees and all this stuff. And it, she got an X percent off. I'll tell you what, if you want me to do the maintenance today, since it, it was so quick to diagnose it, we can just charge you for the maintenance contract and I can give you that discount if you'd like, right? Cause I want to do what we did for Mrs. Jones, right? And now I have them in that funnel. Okay. So when we then have a maintenance contract sold, they start seeing the value of it immediately. Okay. And next year we get the renewal and the next year we get the renewal and we start to raise the value of the business. Okay. Of course, these are sold per system too. So if there's multiple units, um, you know, sometimes it's not feasible for the technician to continue and do maintenance on everything because they have a full schedule. They might have to, you might have to send a maintenance technician back to do the maintenance after you get the system running. Okay. Um, so the key here is you cast the hook, you tell a story. All right. That's real. Don't make anything up. Homeowners know, we all know. All right. Um, and then offer something to the customer, a reason to say yes today. That's the key piece, okay? Um, and the more the technician does it, the more comfortable they are with it and the more they believe in it. I gotta tell you, year one, when I first started, it, it was really hard for me. I was, I was like 17 or 18, all right? So um, that might have something to do with it, just talking with customers and being comfortable, okay? But I gotta tell you, I, I wasn't very comfortable because I didn't believe in maintenance and how it was gonna help the company and help me, all right? Once we started flattening out cash flow and flattening out workload, I saw it on everybody's faces and how happy people were to come to work. We could take new calls and new customers. We weren't running around. This is another feature our company used to have on service nights and weekends, unless it was a new installation under labor warranty or there were a maintenance contract customer. Those are the only ones we provide uh, service for if it was after hours on, or on the weekends. So it provided an incentive for our customers to sign up for that maintenance program as well on the service side, okay? Also, we weren't out there cleaning coils on a Saturday night, okay? So um, the technicians were much happier. And you know what? We left it up to the technician. If they weren't a maintenance contract customer and you really wanted to help them, you thought it was the right thing to do, go ahead, right? Um, but this is the minimum charge for a non-maintenance contract customer. So um, if people wanted to pay it and they were willing and you were willing to do the work and you, you didn't have to, but we'll pay overtime because they're paying X amount. Okay. So hook story and offer really important. So one other thing here on service, really, really important that I found helped us a lot was we standardized the price for a diagnostic fee and a maintenance contract. It costs the same. So we no longer had the conflict of, well, how much does it charge to have a maintenance done? So someone would call and say, oh, I just need my system clean. You'd show up and the system wasn't working, right? Or they would, they would say their system's not working because our, our diagnostic fee was less than our maintenance or whatever it ended up being, okay? So um, really important, standardize the price so that way your office always says the same price. Oh, to have our technician come out, it's 109 or 139 or whatever it is, okay? Um, like I talked about during peak demand, if you already did all of this maintenance, you're going to have less failures of your customers and your operating systems that you installed in the past. You're able to take on one new customers and you're able to then also hire the best technicians and keep them. It's less seasonal work, right? So you're having all of that money up front in the year on the renewals and you're able to hire and keep the best technicians year round. Okay. So you're going to get better staff, happier staff, 
especially on the service side. Um, and if you provide a, a SPIF program to them, it's going to raise the value of your business and they're going to get paid more. So they're less likely to leave for a dollar an hour or whatever we have to deal with out there in, in, on the labor side. You know, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it right now, we are dealing with COVID-19. Um, but if you remember a couple months ago, we had a labor problem, right? Guess what? Next month, we're going to have a labor problem. So uh, if you couldn't keep your guys on staff, I'm sure there's a company out there trying to hire them today. Okay. So um, really important. Look for ways to implement things that will keep your technicians. Something different. Um, not all companies offer a SPIF program for maintenance contracts. And they're really, really easy to sell a technician on how to sell it. All right. Um, so I actually have templates to walk through most of the types uh, or one or the other. So I used to do a lot of maintenance on ACs, heat pumps, um, ducted, obviously, and uh, furnaces and boilers, right? So I stayed away from oil. So I don't have an, a template to offer you on the oil side, but I'm willing to bet if you're an oil company, you do plenty of maintenance because it won't run if you don't do maintenance, right? So I think we have customers that do gas and ACs. Uh, you know, most of those customers tend to not have planned maintenance. So um, those are the ones we actually had to sell, right? Um, so on the maintenance contract side, really important that these features are part of this. Um, if you don't have this yet, I'll tell you how to get these at the end of the, the training, um, you know, right at 630 here. So uh, first piece I want to say is uh, you need to in state specifically what, and I used to call it an energy savings agreement included, right? Because obviously maintenance would save energy, all right? Um, so you can brand it however you'd like. I think maintenance contract is probably the harshest word. Um, there's other ways of stating that. And if you have a way that I haven't mentioned yet, feel free to throw it in the chat um, unless you don't want your competition knowing. All right. Um, so you also want to state what the contract costs, very specific upfront. All right. And how long that lasts. So if it's an annual basis, calendar year, an annual from when you send it in, when you renew monthly, whatever that contract is, you want it stated in black and white where they're signing. Um, what is not included, and this would be the most obvious thing. So I'm gonna show you an example of what I had here in my templates, I'll walk through them. Um, but it's really important to put a statement in there about the basic things that are not included. So as an example, um, refrigerant, if we find the system's under charge and there's a leak, leak diagnostic and refrigerant is not included with your maintenance contract, right? Um, things along those lines. Also, put a unique offer in there, something for them to sign and send back the check today. All right, just like I talked about before. So there's got to be a reason. So, like I told you before, one of my one of my unique offers was we provide uh, night and weekend service only for maintenance contract customers, or you'll get 20% off repairs if we find something while you're on maintenance, or something along those lines. You got to have a unique offer, something additional that they're getting. Um, obviously you want to tell them how to pay. Ideally we love checks, but I'm sure you all have a portal on your website or a way for them to pay as well, whether it's PayPal, Venmo, other re other ways out there, the easier you make it for them to pay, the more likely they're going to renew today. All right. So this is the top portion, you know, and, and in my templates, it's a word document. You can just highlight it and type in the information yourself. I just put in red what the template is for up in the top. So you obviously want to remove this. This is an AC only maintenance contract. So on the top part of this is the standard salutation, the homeowner's name, the quote includes how many maintenance visits, right? So I do one in the spring for an AC, the labor and maintenance uh, materials is as follows. So I specifically state what we're testing and what's included. Okay. Um, I personally only included one inch filters that were MERV seven or less. Anything more than that was an additional charge. So like April Air, Air Bear, um, Ultravation, I can't name all of them. You guys know what I'm talking about. The additional IAQ filters that are available, obviously that would cost more. So you wanna state that in there, you know, if you have a lot of those that you're selling. So we would check the electrical connections, all the amperages, thermostat settings, replace the standard air filters, right? Clean the condensing unit. That is something that a lot of people avoid I made sure every technician I worked with cleaned the condenser. If there is no spigot for some reason, they were out there with a pump sprayer, all right? You clean the condenser, whether it's a heat pump or an AC only, every time, all right? Um, I know that that can be up for debate with some of you guys, I'm sure, especially when you're busy, but uh, really important, perception's reality. If the outdoor unit is not clean, a homeowner does not believe it was maintained, okay? 
So um, we verified proper airflow. So after setup, we used to use static pressure, but um, there's other, other items out there like true flow plates or other ways of measuring airflow. We'd obviously verify refrigerant charge. We'd make sure that the temperature was above the minimum in order to provide that. And then of course we'd quote any needed repairs, all right? So really basic stuff here. Obviously condensate drain and pump, we'd clean those things out, add a tablet, all the basic maintenance items. Um, but we spelled it out on the ticket for the customer so they knew the value of it. All right, so next piece, how much it costs, right? And when do we want that check or payment by? So the cost to provide the above services will total X. I used to do at uh, one time, it was 109. I think we, we ended at 130 per unit. Of course, when you start getting into multi-zone heat pumps um, or, or ductless systems, you might have a scale based on indoor units because obviously the indoor unit labor is X amount per unit. The condenser is the condenser, whether it's a single zone or an eight zone, right? So um, just make sure that the scale makes sense and it's offered the same way to all of your customers, okay? Then you wanna list out what is not included. Very important, right? So in this example, and I, I'm not one to read slides, but I wanna make it very obvious here. Um, costs, it's not included, uh, parts and labor not associated with maintenance and identify as a repair. And this is told to the customer after we do the maintenance stuff, if we find failures or something that should be replaced, we're presenting those options to the customer before we leave, right? It's written down on the service ticket. It's not something that you forgot to write or your technicians didn't complete the ticket because it's maintenance. None of that is acceptable, right? Cus customer signs the ticket when you leave, okay? Whether it's electronic or paper. So not, uh, you can see here, for example, but not limited to adding refrigerant, replacing air handler components, any electrical com component, right? Due to wear or failure. So really important you spell that out, all right? Um, also giving them examples of, other service calls that is not um, maintenance or could require an additional visit, like loss of cooling. If they have no, no air conditioning and you haven't done maintenance yet, they can't call up and use that as a credit or something, right? That's a no, that's a no cooling call, that's not maintenance. If we're out here, we could probably do the maintenance for you at the same time, but you're gonna probably pay a diagnostic fee unless it's really simple and easy, okay? Um, also any quarter repairs we've already done. What I used to do was I would make options on there on, on that service ticket. When I did maintenance, I always made my technicians provide at least three upgrades or options. And then when my service coordinator scheduled it the following year, she would ask the customer, did you decide if you wanted to do any of the options from last year so we can bring everything with us? Because guess what? We can put that in while you're out there on maintenance. So there's no additional labor. Or, or there's X percent off for the labor if it's a really extensive repair, okay? Um, obviously, we, we state it's unlikely, right? But you're gonna be billed uh, a standard rate or whatever the rate is um, upon your approval once we diagnose the system, right? So really specific in there on how we do business. And I'm gonna be honest, I, I always, when I was early in my career, I stayed away from flat rate, um, but then I realized even when we were time of material, we were basically flat rate. So if I told a customer how, how much something costs up front, it's gonna be about this. I really couldn't charge them more. So we were, we were flat rate anyway. And, and really it helped us on the diagnostic fee to get a, a fee that made sense because it was a flat rate diagnostic for the first X amount until you figure out what's wrong and then the repair cost X amount. So it really helped us on, this, on the maintenance side as well because the guys could just flip open the book or scroll through, we used a, an app for that. All right, and then of course, uh, that offer, right? So available in this year, all customer agreement customers will receive 20% off any repairs. And that's obviously found out during diagnosis while you're on the maintenance visit, okay? So we would offer that off of the standard rate. Of course, if you're doing flat rate, this is typically built into your pricing, okay? So you're not losing money. Don't think like you're giving everybody a discount, okay? It's just your non-maintenance contract customers are gonna be paying more because you're not out there cleaning the system every year. They should pay more, let's be honest, right? You're gonna to have to fix the system and clean the system while you're there, all right? Um, and then how to pay. So you can pay by personal check. If you are, make it out to X, right? Or you can pay by credit card, go to my website, click on the shopping cart, whatever it is, right? Make it easy and obvious for how to pay. And you can even offer discounts if you want them to pay a certain way, all right? You never charge more to, part, to pay uh, a different way, right? That's illegal, okay? So um, gas furnaces, the format's really similar. It's just obviously you're gonna be doing furnace uh, maintenance in the fall typically unless you're on, on one of the oil plans with, with hot water, you might be doing something in the spring, you never know. 
Um, but of course, fall maintenance on a gas furnace or a propane furnace, very similar stuff like you would on the indoor unit. Um, but of course, uh, we'd be checking humidifiers, cleaning humidifiers and checking their settings and um, gas pressures, so obviously. And then of course, picking up any additional repairs, right? So quoting any repairs. So same format, just a couple of additional or different things that we're checking, but we're making it really obvious in the contract, okay? Um, and then you can see if you're including, this is gas heat and an AC. So this would be like an AC add-on. So the contract would be for one visit in the spring for the AC, one visit in the fall for the furnace, right? So obviously that, that contract would cost twice as much as if you were just doing an AC or a furnace because you're doing both for the year, all right? Um, and then we're just combining it. But I put it on one page for you guys to make it really easy in those templates. Um, this one is probably a little bit more unique. So I tried to give you in the templates the ability to copy and paste multiple different ways. So I put in there AC and a gas boiler because there's plenty of those in Cape Homes and Colonials and, and here in the Northeast. So you can see all of the AC stuff stayed the same. When you get down to the bottom, um, your boiler maintenance, we were checking pumps and valve amperages, um, expansion tank pressures, um, obviously gas pressures, and uh, we would check water, we would check gallons per minute based on temperature difference on the piping, okay? So um, obviously with uh, today's high efficient boilers, you might have to do some flushing and there might be some additional costs there. You have to price that correctly for that type of boiler. Really important. Don't think every boiler is the same. This is more for a cast iron boiler, all right? All right, so main point here, what I wanted to point out, uh, you shouldn't, when it comes to maintenance, you should not be waiting for the phone to ring, all right? If you're waiting for the phone to ring, that's reactive, and that's why you're not able to take on the number of customers this year that your, your company should have been able to, all right? Um, it's unfortunate, most of our business, and when I was a technician, that's the way I felt until we had a maintenance contract program, and my guys were busy as soon as the, as soon as the snow was gone, all right? Um, this gives you the ability to, to get the best staff and keep the best staff and keep them, keep them healthy and happy, all right? Um, and if you're a business owner, this is the way to increase the value of your business, right? Because you're basically getting a subscription and that is known uh, income every year. If you sell a system, right? Sure, you get the profit on that system, but that was a one and done customer. If they're having you come back every year, right? That raises the value of the business. And when you go to sell the business, um, you know, I, there's a lot of rules of thumb out there. It could be four or five times your annual income. But if, if you're, uh, you're just doing system replacements, there's no guarantee that that new business owner is going to gain that business. Um, obviously, if you have maintenance contracts to sell, that is a whole amount of income that's up for renewal every year. All right. So it's, it attracts buyers. It's a huge difference when you go to value your business if you have recurring income, all right? So really important, if you don't have those templates yet, um, if you haven't subscribed to HVAC Pro Blog, if you just go to HVACProblog.com, click on subscribe, the welcome email has templates for maintenance contracts in there, along with a few other resources. One of them is my um, ebook on a simple guide to low static duct design. Obviously, there's a, a PDF download of rules of duct design as well, along with my load calc site survey form and a little scorecard I used to use to keep track of all the items that we need for system design. So I have to keep looking it up every time when I did a load calc. So a nice little scorecard I used to call it. So all of those resources available, all you have to do is subscribe for free to the blog. Um, if you already subscribe and you can't find it, just shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to send it over to you, okay? Uh, and you can probably most likely find it uh, if you search it on my uh, webpage on Facebook. Um, I've posted it on Twitter at HVAC Morin. Um, same thing on LinkedIn. And then of course my new YouTube channel, which just started this month. So this will be posted on YouTube, uh, hopefully by tomorrow, as well as an audio only version on my events page on HVACProblog.com backslash events. So last thing I wanna mention before I wrap it up here, if you didn't know, I do offer residential system design classes. Unfortunately, I can't do that in person these days, given the situation, but you can take this online in an e-learning format. It's $249. You get 90 days access to 90 different pieces of the training. So each recorded part of it, which we walk through manual J site survey, equipment selection for all the normal 
uh, installations for uh, manual S in a residence, and then uh, duct design from the basics about uh, available static pressure, total equivalent length, all the way through sizing runs and trunks, okay? The longhand way with the worksheet before you dive into software, okay? So um, if you're interested, if you go to the site, uh, hvacproblog.com, you click on courses, there's a link there. I also offer just the duct design piece separate because I got a lot of questions for that separately. The duct design only manual D is 149. The whole manuals J, S, and D is 249. So those are being offered as we speak. Uh, you can sign up at any time. And if you have any questions as a student in there, you can actually access me right through that uh, platform. Uh, or you can get me on social media. There's a couple of unique pages that's for the residential system design class. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out about those. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time tonight. It looks like I went two minutes long. I'm sorry. I know it's nice out and I know my family is waiting for me to finish up so I can go for a walk with them. So um, I'm going to stick around for a few more minutes after I stop the recording if in case you guys have any questions but I really wanna take the time to say thank you because I see a lot of familiar faces from the previous weeks. This happens to be my last one for May this year. So um, if you found, find this valuable and you want me to continue, um, shoot me an email. Um, I'm, I'm just interested on how it's gonna work once it got warm out. So you can see the attendees start to drop off today. I get it. I'd rather be out installing a system if I was in your, your, your shoes. So, um, but if you found it valuable and you'd like to continue, um, shoot me an email. I'd love, I'd love to hear if there's a topic you'd like to hear about. Uh, more than happy to, uh, to work something out in future months. All right. So I appreciate you guys taking the time.